Hello again. I hope you are not tired of this long example. I know that it's very complicated sometimes to understand. Codes, especially Euro codes, are somehow difficult to follow if you have plenty of things to be checked. Sometimes you have to jump from this clause to the other clause and it's what it is. So we are almost at the end and we can continue the calculation of the design resistance of the rigid connection. To recap, we introduced one two stories frame, a portal frame under vertical load. I will load it later. Uh, three meters height for each level, seven meters the distance between the columns and the net length of the beam is 6668 mm. Earlier we calculated the tension resistance for the column web, column flange, end plate and beam in tension. Then we calculated compressive resistance in column web and then flange and web of the uh, beam. Then we checked the column shear panel against the shear that might happen. Now at the end, we have to calculate the design resistance of the connection. So our connection is here. HEA200 is the beam connected to HEB300 as column with an end plate with 16 millimeter thickness, 250 millimeter width, 320 millimeter depth. Now going back to Eurocode, in class 6272, beam to column joints with bolted end plate connections. Item number one, the design moment resistance of a beam to column joint with a bolted end plate connection is calculated according to the given equation. FTRRD is the effective design tension resistance of bolt row R and HR is the distance from bolt row R to the center of compression. In the previous video, we understood that the center of compression is the center of bottom flange of the beam. R is the bolt row number. In a bolted joint with more than one bolt row in tension, the bolt rows are numbered starting from the bolt row furthest from the center of compression. So that's why we named from the top as R1. Item number two, for bolted end plate connections, the center of compression should be assumed to be in line with the center of the compression flange of the connected member. The effective design tension resistance FTRRD for each bolt row should be determined in sequence, starting from bolt row one, the bolt row furthest from the center of compression, then progressing to bolt row two, etc. When determining the effective design tension resistance FTRRD for bolt row R, the effective design tension resistance of all other bolt rows closer to the center of compression should be ignored. So these are general information. Now let's have a summary of what we got from the beginning. To have the summary of the calculation, here is the component bolt row number one, two, one and two together. In video number one, column flange in bending for row number one, 282 kN, row number two, 282, and for row one and two, 564. Video number two, column web in transverse tension, 790, 790, 1006 kN. Video number three, end plate in bending, 232, 282, not applicable. Video number four, beam web in tension, not applicable for row number one, 850, and not applicable. So this is for tension. Also for the compression, we calculated the resistance. In video number five, we went through FCWCRD 783, column web in transverse compression. FCFBWCRD. RD video number 6 847 beam flange and web in compression and finally VWPRD in video number 7 875 as column web in shear these are the resistances that we calculated to continue we need to check this 6272 beam to column joints with bolted end plate connections uh, there are many items ongoing. Let's continue with the other items. 
In item number five, the effective design tension resistance of bolt row R should be taken as its design tension resistance as an individual bolt row determined from 6 to 7 to 6 reduced if necessary to satisfy the conditions specified in the given items in the following. So the first is item number six. The effective design tension resistance FTRRD of bolt row R taken as an individual bolt row should be taken as the smallest value of the design tension resistance for an individual bolt row of the following basic components. The column web intention, we calculated this FTWCRD, column web intention 790-790-1006. Then FTFC, column flange in bending, column flange in bending 282-282-564. End plate in bending, and plate in bending 232 282 not applicable and the beam web intention 850 we had this earlier so the minimum in each row is going to be 232 282 and 564 kilometers the effective design tension resistance ftrrd of bolt row r should if necessary be reduced below the value of ftrd given by item number six to ensure that when account is taken of all bolt rows up to and including bolt row R, the following conditions are satisfied. The total design resistance FTRD needs to be less than VWPRD divided by beta. For our case, beta is one. So now we can check sigma FTRD is 232 kN plus 282 kN for the first and second row. 232, 282 is 514 kN and it should be less than VWPRD divided by bit. VWPRD is 875. The next is uh, the total design resistance does not exceed the smaller value of the design resistance of the column web in compression, the design resistance of the beam flange and web in compression. So sigma FTRD is 514 kN and it should be less than FCWCRD and FCFBRD. These two are 783 and 847. If it was not uh, less than these values, then we had to decrease it from the closest bolt row up to the furthest one. So it means that for example, if it was, let's say 900, then we had to limit it to 780. Then we have to reduce the capacity of row number two. And if it was not sufficient, we had to reduce the uh, resistance of each row bolt until it is satisfied that the summation of total row bolts are less than these two values. So number seven is fulfilled. Number eight, the effective design tension resistance FTRRD of bolt row R should, if necessary, be reduced below the value in item number six to ensure that the sum of the design resistance taken for the bolt row up to and including bolt row R, that from part, the effective design tension resistance FTRRD of bolt row R should, if necessary, be reduced below the value of FTRD according to item number six to ensure that the sum of the design resistance taken for the bolt rows up to and including bolt row R that form part of the same group of bolt rows does not exceed the design resistance of that group as a whole. This should be checked for the following basic components. So it means that if you have any bolt rows, then you need to check that they are satisfying the sum of bolt row group. The column web intention, it was 1006, the summation of those two rows. So at the moment with 232 to 82, this is satisfied. Column flange in bending 564, 232 plus 282 is less than that value. And for end plate in bending, it is not relevant. For beam web intention, also it is not relevant. 
where the effective design tension resistance FTX RD of one of previous bolt rows X is greater than 1.9 FTRD, then the effective design tension should be reduced according to the given equation. Here, if we want to go through the understanding this part, the first bolt row is 232 and the second one is 282 kN. Then bolt row number one is the first, so it is excluded from this item. Bolt row number 2 is 282 and the previous bolt row is not greater than 1.9 times 282. So 232 is less than 1.9 times 282. As a result, we don't need to decrease the value of row number 2. So as far as all the criteria are met, now we can come back to the given equation MJRD stigma hr times ftrrd it's better to have our sketch and finalize our calculation bolt row number one can take up to 232 kilometers bolt row number two 282 kilometers consider that then when they are taking the load this is the resistance when the beam is under bending moment in the connection the taken load be completely different for example if the bolt row number one is taking 150 then the bolt row number two will take less than 150 this is the resistance capacity it means that if the bending moment reaches to a value that the first row is going to be 232 kN then the rest of the bending moment will be transferred as tension to bolt row number two and this is the center of the compression so the value up to the midway of these two we calculated in the previous and z was 180 millimeter in the previous video so here this is 45 millimeter less it will be 135 and the other one will be 45 millimeter more 225 millimeter and for the compression capacity as far as it should be in balance sigma fx should be zero as a result the compressive force is 232 plus 282 kN which is 514 kN and according to the given equation mjrd will be 232 kN times 225 millimeter plus 282 kN times 135 millimeter 232 225 282 135 and it is 90 kN meter mjrd is the bending moment capacity of this connection according to all criteria that we consider other criteria that needs to be checked shear capacity of the bolt you can do it by yourself uh, checking uh, the interaction between the tension and shear force together bearing capacity those are excluded from this video we are focusing on the rigid connection and bending moment capacity that is the end of this video it's really not finished yet we have to calculate the a stiffness or rotational stiffness of this connection according to Eurocode. We will come back to this in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.